John Hatton, the former independent MP who successfully moved for a royal commission into police corruption in 1994, re-emerged this week to demand a royal commission into property and planning corruption in New South Wales. Mr Hatton, now 76, was a balance of power independent in 1994. His authorised biography, The Stench in This Parliament, was launched by the Speaker of Parliament, Richard Torbay, this week. The Wood Royal Commission found police corruption was systemic and had been protected for decades through a corrupt internal culture's code of silence. That Royal Commission was brought in over the top of the existing Independent Commission Against Corruption set up in 1989, 20 years ago. The Royal Commission, under Justice James Wood, recruited investigators from outside New South Wales because of concern that any inquiry could be compromised or subverted by leaks to New South Wales Police. John Hatton says the contemporary ICAC under Commissioner Gerald Cripps QC has failed to do its duty and a Royal Commission to clear the air of a stench around property corruption is now urgently needed. I was for eight years a member of the ICAC Oversight Committee. I know what corruption is. I know what evidence is. I know what the obligation of ICAC is. And I know what failure is and lack of commitment, courage. I call on the New South Wales Government to instigate a Royal Commission into the corruption of process, the improper influence of some major developers, the failure of public officials to keep proper records, the relationship between senior public servants, politicians and property developers, and the failure of the Independent Commission Against Corruption to competently investigate. John Hatton was the independent member for South Coast for 22 years through the Askin, Willis, Rann, Unsworth, Griner and Fay governments to 1995. He used parliamentary privilege to telling effect to expose organised crime, the Griffith Mafia, police corruption and malfeasance within government departments and agencies. In 1994, by 46 votes to 45, he used his leverage as a balance of power crossbencher to force the minority Fay government to override the Independent Commission Against Corruption to establish a groundbreaking Royal Commission. In spite of a rhetorical counter-attack that he was a ratbag and a conspiracy theorist, he was vindicated. The Wood Royal Commission, through phone taps, rollover informants and covert surveillance, finding that police corruption in New South Wales was endemic. It's a great privilege on behalf of, I think, the people of New South Wales to declare this book officially launched. This week, at the launch of Ruth Richmond's authorised biography of John Hatton, The Stench in This Parliament, John Hatton says he'll now tour the state to collect more evidence of property corruption, particularly in coastal New South Wales. I give notice to Premier uh, Rees. He is going to have a Royal Commission because the stench is so great that he will not be able to avoid it. Everywhere we go in New South Wales, I'm going to collect the outrage and I'm going to collect the evidence and I'm going to build the pressure. So, Nathan Rees, you're going to instigate a Royal Commission, you're going to clear the air, now or later. The decision's up to you. John Hatton says he's come out of retirement because ICAC Commissioner Gerald Cripps QC ignored evidence of corruption in his local area of Shoalhaven he'd raised by letter two years ago. The Liberal Party also had failed to prosecute the case he'd raised with them, even with the advantage of parliamentary privilege. Plus, there was his own observations of the ICAC's failure to pursue evidentiary leads after the Wollongong corruption inquiry. I congratulated the uh, ICAC um, over the Wollongong inquiry. I was excited by that. They'd used their powers and and they'd exposed widespread corruption. We were waiting, and I'm telling you there's some very well-informed citizens in Wollongong who are waiting for Justice Cripps to follow the predator chain up into Macquarie Street. And it never happened. And I want to know why it didn't happen. Stateline again has sought an interview with outgoing ICAC Commissioner Gerald Cripps QC. He's again declined. 
Justice Cripps leaves the ICAC next week to take a post with the Sentencing Council. He'll be replaced by retired Supreme Court Judge David Ipp QC. They have had 26 inquiries. ICAC, let me read out the list quickly of the inquiries that ICAC have, have, have undertaken. Rail Corp. Warringah Council, Transgrid, New South Wales Department of Education and Training, Karingai Council, the New South Wales Fire Brigade, Rail, Rail Corp, allegations of fraud, bribery, Wollongong City Council, Department of Housing, Wollongong City Council again, Bankstown and Strathfield Councils, the RTA, the Parramatta City Council, Rail Corp again, Board of Studies, RTA and Rail Corp, Burwood Council, Department of Corrective Services, New South Wales Department of Housing, the Department of Corrective Services again, the New South Wales Cabinet Office. They finally got to Macquarie Street. And what did they uh, reveal? What, what were they investigating? An alleged leak of a draft Cabinet document. <laughs> you know, you've got to be joking. New South Wales uh, Local Courts, Work Cover, Office of Fair Trading and, and South Western Sydney Area Health Service. 26 inquiries and not one into the senior levels of the planning in New South Wales. The problem with ICAC is that it hasn't got this dogged commitment. It hasn't got the will to use its powers to really get at the source of the corruption all right, let's expose problems in state rail. I expose those myself and in RTA and in the Water Board without any of their resources. You've got to aim your blows and your investigations at the source of power and that's within the Parliament and at the top levels of the public service. But the ICAC has exposed Wollongong. Yeah, but it didn't follow the obvious links between Wollongong and Macquarie Street. Speak to anybody in Wollongong and they'll tell you they know what the links are. They have reported matters to ICAC and, in fact, they discovered matters of, of importance in Wollongong that ICAC had completely overlooked. It's amazing. The ICAC is celebrating 20 years of corruption fighting this year. Its latest annual report highlights its achievements in corruption prevention and its prosecution record. But this veteran of corruption fighting remains dissatisfied. Fifteen years after his call for a Royal Commission into Police Corruption, John Hatton says another is needed into planning. It was quite clear that ICAC had failed to expose the widespread corruption in the New South Wales Police Service and there was a lack of will or a lack of professional uh, ability to do the job. And of course the Royal Commission exposed that. ICAC could have exposed the endemic corruption, never even got near it. Now we've got a replay. But we've had an ICAC in New South Wales since 1988. Are you saying it's, it's a dud? Yes, I am. I'm saying it's a dud. Stateline extends an open invitation to outgoing ICAC Commissioner Gerald Cripps for an on-camera interview to canvas John Hatton's complaints.